Hi and welcome to Essential Lightroom. In this week's video we're going to take a look at processing this image to take it from what we have in front of us which is a fairly boring looking image and take it through to something a little bit more special. So we're going to process it from this and take it through to this. As always I've got a free preset available that will take you pretty much right the way through this with one click. But stick around to the end because I'm going to show you how you can take that preset and enhance the effect you have on the image that you're working with. So we're going to take a couple more steps and show you how to really get the best out of this free preset. So as always, I'm going to take you through the develop module step by step and show you what I've done. And like I say, at the end of this, when we go past the point of what the preset gives you, I'm going to show you some extra steps to really enhance the image that you're working with and get the most out of this free preset. So first of all, in the develop module, we're going to go into the basics panel and we're going to tweak the image. So let's just reset this back to where it was when we started. And we're going to go through now and just get the image ready to start doing the color processing. So the first thing I want to do is deal with how flat this image looks. So we're going to take the contrast, we're just going to bump that up a little bit. We're not going to go mad with this, probably about plus 10, plus 15, somewhere around that point. We're going to do most of our contrast controls in the tone curve and through the clarity slider. Next, I want to warm the image up ever so slightly. And now this is something that is really down to the image that you're working with. So this is only going to be a slight tweak, but I want to take this over to the warmer tone. So we're just going to bump this up a little bit just to give it a slight warmth that we're like kind of lacking with the photograph where it's been taken. Next up, we're going to grab the highlights. We're going to bring those down so we kind of flatten the skin on the forehead. We're going to bring those right the way down, probably around about that kind of point. That's looking pretty good. And the shadows, we're just going to open those up a little bit. So when we start to crush those down with the tone curve, we've got more detail in there to work with. So kind of around about that point, that's looking pretty good. And with the whites, we want to get a little bit more contrast in this, a little bit more stark. So we're going to bump the whites up as well, give those a nice little bit of a boost. Around the mid 30 should do. And then we're just going to grab the blacks and we're going to pull those down so we can kind of get that extra bit of contrast in there that we're looking for. So... There we go. That's already looking much better. And we've de really done next to nothing to it. So next, I want to bring some more of the detail out. So we've got some great detail in the hair and in the jumper. So we're just going to grab the clarity slider and we're going to give that a bit of a boost. I don't want to go crazy with this because when it comes to female form and the skin and the female face and things, if you bump the clarity up a little too high, it can start to look a little bit unnatural and really does bring out any blemishes. We kind of want to try to avoid that while still getting some nice contrast and some nice edge detail in there. So around about plus 15 works really well for this image. Now the next thing I want to do is just want to desaturate this a little bit. So I'm going to grab the vibrance. And we're going to bring that down about minus 10 to 15. And we're going to do the same for saturation probably around about minus 10, somewhere around that kind of ballpark. Actually, let's just take the vibrance up a little bit. Let's get both about minus 10. So this is looking pretty nice, and we could leave it there if we want to, and it would look a lot better than what we started off with, but we've got plenty more we can do once we start jumping into the tone curve. Okay, so with the tone curve, we're in the point mode. So what we need to do is ensure that we've got the right mode enabled. So if you don't see this layout in the same way that we've got on here, just simply click this little icon and you can see it switches between the two modes. So we're going to jump back to this so we can now directly influence the tone curve itself. Now, most of the time, I keep the tone curve pretty simple. We just edit the RGB channel and just adjust the overall tonality of the image, not dealing with any colors. But for this example, we're going to delve in a little deeper and start to play about with some of the color channels. So if we see where this RGB option is, you can see at the moment that's what we're dealing with, which is the overall tonal information in the, in the image itself. We expand that out and we can start going through now and editing the red, green and blue channels as well as the RGB channel. So let's go in and take a look what we've got in there. So first of all, let's jump into the green channel. So with the green channel up, we're going to make a couple of little tweaks in here. Now, most of these things are pretty subtle because we don't want to go crazy with this. We really want to enhance the image, not make it look really crazy stylized. So we're going to go through and we're going to add a couple of extra points in. Now, most of the time, what I'll do is I'll add an extra point to each of the intersecting lines. And that gives me my good starting point. So I've now got five points that I can play about with inside my image. And these five points with the intersecting lines equate to the five areas of tonal information in our image. We've got the blacks, we've got the whites, we've got the highlights, the mid-tones, and the shadows. So we can influence the tonal information, we can influence the color information based upon the RGB channels. So you can see if we start to pull this down, we'll start to introduce the opposite color to green. 
and the opposite colors to greens are magentas and reds. So if we start to pull this down, we'll find in the shadows we start to introduce a sort of purpley magenta cast. And you can see now, if you look in the background, that's the kind of color we're getting in there. Whereas if we take this and increase it, we boost the amount of green that's in the shadow area. So that's really what you're doing with these channels. You can either boost the color, the natural color, the red, green, or blue, or you can bring in the opposing color depending upon which tonal area you're working with. So for this example, we're gonna keep this pretty straightforward. Like I say, there's just some slight subtle tweaks. We're just gonna grab in the shadow and fish and we're gonna introduce just a little bit of magenta to warm up the background just ever so slightly. Now the same goes for the highlights. We're gonna do the opposite on this though. We're gonna just give those a little bit of a boost. So we're gonna make those a little bit greener. Now this might look a bit strange to start off with because we're really only sort of dealing with one channel, not the overall mix together. But once we finish with this, you'll see the effect builds up quite nicely. So what we've done is we've created a very, very subtle S curve. Let's bring this down just a little bit more. So we've got a very slight S curve going on in there. Really, really subtle. So before and after. And you can see it does change the overall color of the Im image itself. Now let's jump over to the blue channel and we're gonna make some tweaks in there as well. And this will now start to balance those changes we've made to the green channel. Now don't worry if this all seems a little confusing. It's one of those things that you've got to experiment with the tone curve. It's the same as the curves inside Photoshop. It can seem very, very daunting to start off with. But once you kind of understand the basics of it and you look at how you can mix the different tones and how you can boost or introduce opposing colors in, you can really get pretty creative with it. So again, in the blue channel, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come in and add in those three extra points. So we've now got our five tonal points arranged in there and for this we're going to keep it really simple as well we're just going to grab the mid-tones and we're going to give those an ever so slight boost so we're going to make the mid-tones just ever so slightly blue now you can see this is where we warmed the image up if we'd left it where it was it would have all started to look a little too cool and we're going to do the same thing now with the highlights we're going to bring those down though so we're going to introduce some of the opposing color so the opposing colors to blue are oranges and yellows so that'll kind of counteract in the the highlights any kind of cold information and we're just going to grab this in the shadows and just bring this down ever so slightly so there's before and there's after so you can see it really does start to change the overall tone of the image itself now next up we're going to go back to the rgb channel i'm not going to deal with anything in the reds because i don't want to introduce or change any colors in those for the particular image we're working with we jump back into the rgb and now we're going to do the same thing in there add our five points in and now what we're going to do is we're just going to influence the tone of the image so we're not colors just the tone and for this, we're gonna kind of do what I normally tend to do with images, and that's grab the shadows or the grab the, the, the black point, bring that up so we kind of crush those shadows down a little bit, and then grab the shadow area and pull that down to kind of counteract. So we now get really crushed blacks for the darkest parts of the image, but we bring in some more of the sort of contrast in the shadow area, so we still keep a nice contrasty image. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come to the highlights and we're gonna give those a bit of a kick probably a fair bit with this because I want to get that nice sort of high contrast to the overall image. I'm going to grab the mid-tones. We're going to give those just an ever so slight boost. So let's just take a quick look at before and after. So this is where we are now. We've made those tone curve changes. And this is where we started off with just the basic changes. So you can see it's really starting to take on a really nice stylized look. So again, this is after. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into the camera calibration settings and we're going to tweak the colors a little further before we jump back into the HSL section to fine tune things. Now you may have thought that the camera calibration settings in Lightroom were really only for that, calibrating your camera. But you can use them way beyond that. You can use these to really go in and fine tune and tweak and enhance colors in your image and really get creative with it. So it gives us another range of way of dealing with color information that's just not limited to the HSL and the tone curve where we just break down into the RGB sliders. So let's take a look at what we're gonna do with this. You can see we've got a couple of options. We've got the shadows where we can adjust the tint of the shadows. We can make them more green or we can make them more magenta depending upon which direction we take them. And this is only gonna affect the shadows in the image. Next up, we've got the option to deal with the red primary and the hue and saturation for that. The same for the green and same for the blue. So again, you can see we've got our red, green and blue options in there, which pretty much make up our image. So we're going to tweak these a little bit now. We're going to adjust the hue for the red primary and the green and the blue. So 
we're going to grab this and we're going to start dragging this over the hue over to the orange side now watch the skin tone in this you'll see that you start to get a change in the skin tones it's not crazy it's pretty subtle but it is there once we start to take the saturation this is where you'll notice more of a difference you'll see that if we desaturate this if you look at the skin tones they start to move more to the white so we kind of get that really desaturated look Whereas if we start to bump this up, we could introduce a little bit more warmth into the skin tone. So we're going to take this up to around about that kind of point, around the mid 30s. And you can see that makes quite a difference. So that's before and after. So the skin tones now start to warm up a little. And the next thing we do is deal with the green primary. So we're going to come over, we're going to do the same again. We're going to grab the hue. We're going to move this over to around about 23, 25, somewhere around there. And then we're going to deal with the saturation. So with this, we're going to bring in some more green to the green primary. Now, there's not a lot of green in this image, but we are finding that this does make a nice little alteration. So around the 40 mark is pretty good. And finally, we're going to come down to the blue. We're not going to adjust the hue on this too much. We're going to reduce it slightly. So in other words, we're going to shift it from being blue. Any blue tones in the image are going to start to be a little bit more cyan. So we're going to take this over and we're going to reduce this down. About minus 10, somewhere around that. Maybe a little more. Yep, somewhere around there and we're going to grab the saturation now and we're going to boost the saturation slightly now you're going to find that the eyes start to change because they're the most sort of prevalent blue object in the image and also the shadows in this sort of metal grating in the background so we're going to take that and we're going to boost that up around about 30s looking pretty good so let's take a look at before and take a look at after so you can see there's some subtle alterations in there. It's nothing that's going to sort of jump out at you. But once you take them away, you can see them, especially if you look at the brickwork behind the model. You can see they take on a much warmer tint when we sort of bring this in. So we bring back in that warmth that we kind of lost a little bit where we've sort of gone through and adjusted some of the colors earlier on. So like I say, pretty subtle, but the overall effect is really quite nice. So this is pretty much where the preset takes you to. And as you can see, it's a really nice looking end result. So if we take a look at before and take a look at after, you can see we've got a much more stylized image. And you can, like I say, leave it there. But what I would suggest is that you take a look at the image that you're working with and the colors that are in there, and you tweak it accordingly to make sure you get the best end results. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in to the HSL section, and we're going to just tweak and adjust some of the sort of primary colors that are being used inside this image. So what I want to do is I want to come down and I'm just going to boost up the reds a little bit to bring back a little bit more warmth. So we're going to take those, we're going to boost those up to the mid 20s. I'm going to do the opposite with the orange. I'm going to bring that down. And you're going to find again, this is the kind of thing that affects the skin tones. So about minus 15 is looking pretty good. If we take a look at before and take a look at after, it's pretty subtle but the skin tones are being affected now we're going to take the same with the yellow we're going to drop that down to around the mid 20 around that kind of area just to get some nicer colors to the skin tone and we're going to take the greens and we're going to do the same in there we're going to just drop those down a little bit to reduce the amount of green that may be in the image in areas that we don't really want it to be with the aqua we're just going to boost that up a little bit so we're going to find that that just helps the eyes pop just a little bit and we're going to grab the blue and we're going to pull that down slightly. So like I say, this is just subtle tweaks. If you take a look at before, take a look at after. We just kind of balance the skin tones with the background without making it too crazy. Now finally, I'm just going to come into the luminance section and we're going to make a couple of sort of slight alterations in there. We're going to grab the orange and we're going to lighten any orange that may be in the image. So we're going to take that up around about that kind of point. It's looking pretty good. Um, with the aquas, we're going to leave the yellows and the greens for this example. We're going to grab the aqua. We're going to lift those up ever so slightly. Kind of around about there looks pretty nice. The blues we're going to give a bit of a, a lightness to. So you can see if you take a look at the eyes and you take a look at this metal grate in the background, when we adjust the blue, that's where we're going to see the biggest difference. So if we start to increase that, you see the eyes really start to pop. And it also lightens up the background. So I kind of like the effect on this. So I want to push this probably about plus 50 somewhere around that kind of range because it really does help the eyes in this image pop out and finally we're just going to grab the purple and we're going to give that a little bit of a boost not too crazy and you can see this will make a difference to the background if you take a look again it's not crazy it's fairly subtle 
but we're going to just give that a bit of a kick around about there. So let's take a look at before and after we've adjusted this now. So there's before, there's after. So you can see we've taken the preset, the initial preset, and we've then tweaked it to ensure that we get great results with this particular image. Obviously, if I was doing a different image, I would use it differently. Well, there we go. There's the Forever Yours preset showing you in action and how to get the best from it just by making some additional tweaks and alterations. Obviously, you don't have to stop there. You can take the image and the processing as far as you want. Well, that's it. That's all there is to using this preset. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. Got any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comments section. Until next time, take care.